Hi folks, we're going to take a look at number 15 from page uh, 53. So they give us this piecewise function and they want us to find these unknowns a and b uh, such that f is continuous at x equals 1. So we see that's one of the places where the equation changes, uh, but it needs to be discontinuous at x equals 2, the other place where the um, uh, function changes uh, equation. All right, so let's take a look at this. We'll start with the first condition that it has to be continuous at 1. So that means that the limit has to exist at 1. Uh, but because that's where the equation changes, I'm actually going to think of it in terms of one-sided limits. All right, so I'm going to need the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f at x to be equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f at x. Okay, so that's one of the conditions of continuity. So let's see what happens when we take these limits. Now, if I take a look as x approaches 1 from the left, so I'm going to be working with this expression here, and I see that while, you know, there's a problem at x equals 2, that's not part of this uh, uh, range of values. So I don't have to worry about the fact that it's going to be equal to 0 at 2. I'm only looking to the left of 1. And this function behaves perfectly nicely uh, to the left at 1. So we can just input x equals 1 into that expression. So what do we have here? We have a minus b over uh, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And that has to be equal to the limit as I approach 1 from the right. So here, if I look to the right, this is the expression which defines f. And again, that's just a linear function. So no issues with... Uh, Finding the limit, I can just input 1, so 3 times 1 is 3. So in other words, a minus b has to be equal to uh, negative 3, okay? Or a is going to be equal to b minus 3, all right? So the first condition, uh, in order for this function to be continuous at 1, I need the a value to be equal to 3 less than the b value, all right? So let's take a look at the second condition. And this is where this question is a little different from most of the others we see of this format. Because normally they would say, well, we want it to be continuous at both of these values. Here, though, we want it to be discontinuous at uh, x equals 2. So that means that whatever happens, we need the limit as x approaches 2 from the left cannot be equal to the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. Okay. And that gives me a sense that there's likely infinitely many answers to this problem, okay? Because there's, prob there's probably only one scenario where the two functions are going to meet exactly at the same point. In other words, that there will be a limit. But there's lots of scenarios where the two functions will not meet at the same point. In other words, we'll create something like a jump. All right, so this is what we're going to take a look at here. So let's find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. Okay, and again, to the left of 2, the function is defined as 3x. So the limit as x approaches 2 is just going to be 3 times 2 is 6. All right, and that cannot be equal to, and let's find the limit of f to the right of 2, which is going to be defined by this function here, which is just a quadratic. So we can just input the number. So we have 4b minus a is 2 squared is 4, so 4b minus a. So this is the condition that has to be met, is that 4b minus a cannot be equal to 6, all right? But we can even be a little more precise because we know that there's a relationship between b and a, okay? So here I'm going to replace a by um, b minus 3. So here we have that 6 cannot be equal to, this is going to be 3b uh, plus 3. So that means that 3b cannot be equal to, bring that over to the other side, 3. And so b cannot be equal to 1. Okay. So what this tells us is that in order to be discontinuous, b cannot be equal to 1. And so that means a cannot be equal to, well, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. All right. So what's going to solve this problem? Okay, In order to have continuity at 1, we need the a value to be b minus 3. But a can't be negative 2 
and b can't be equal to 1, which is one of the pairs that would solve this equation, okay? Because if b was 1 and a was negative 2, then this function would be continuous at 2. We want it to be discontinuous, so that means it could be any scenario as long as this doesn't occur. So how can we state the answers? Well, the answers can be given. It's the set of all a and b values that are real numbers such that a has to be equal to b minus 3. Okay, this condition has to be met in order to satisfy the continuity at 1, but a cannot be equal to negative 2 and b cannot be equal to 1. One of the scenarios which fits this condition, but that's the scenario that's going to make it continuous at 2. We need to eliminate it because we want discontinuity at 2. Okay, so this is how you can express your solutions. Okay, infinitely many solutions. So it's all scenarios where a is equal to b minus 3. So, you know, if b is equal to 17, then a is going to be equal to 14. Okay. That's going to make it continuous at 2. You can stick it in a check, but it's going to make it discontinuous at, sorry, it's going to make it continuous at 1. But if you try to check at 2, we're going to see that it's going to create discontinuity. So in the end, we have infinitely many solutions. Okay, that's it for this one.